Good morning already. Quickly! Move away from the house! Quickly! Come, children! Are you all right, Pastor? <coughs> yes. Thankfully, we're all... John! John is missing! He's not here! Ah! <coughs> I can't get past the flame! There he is! I see him! John! Oh, my son! A ladder! We need a ladder! There's no time for that! On my shoulders! Quickly! Ah. Ah. No! There! I see him! Father! John, my boy! Oh, thank God! John! Oh, thank you, dear God! Thank you! Mother! God has saved you, John! Just like the Bible says, a brand snatched from the burning! He must have something special for you to do. Something very special indeed. A brand snatched from the fire. I've never forgotten those words. Set aside for the work of the Lord, Mr. Wesley. Something important. Why else would God have spared me? From that day on, I have done everything I can to prove myself worthy of God's intervention. How so? By doing my very best to please him. I was a good boy, a good son, and a good student. Eventually, I was accepted into the University of Oxford, along with my younger brother, Charles. Our Christian zeal was unmatched. We shall meet after classes every evening to study the Bible and pray. We shall fast twice a week, visit the poor and those in prison. And to make sure we do not offend God in any way, we shall have daily self-examination. And live up to our name. The Holy Club. Thus, we performed our Christian duties to the best of our abilities, intent on saving others' souls, as well as our own. Some received us gladly, and some did not. Oh, holy club! Bearing good fruit today! Well, take that! <laughs> we had some setbacks and some successes, but I never felt it was enough to fulfill my purpose and get right with God. So what did you do? Charles and I soon set our sights upon new horizons. America, where we journeyed with the great intention of converting the Native Americans and turning the colonists into holy men. One and a half years I labored among those sinful people. Astounding, Mr. Wesley. I do applaud you. And now, having accomplished so very much, you return to England a great success. <sighs> no. I return to England a dismal failure. What? But... The colonists rejected us. As for the Native Americans, not one convert. I have done my best to serve God, and my best has not been enough. I am in total darkness, and I fear I am worthless. Come on, Andy, just a little more. I I'm trying, Sarah. I'm just so tired. Mrs. Higgins says if we go by the pub before she closes, we can have the scraps. 
Warm food. That's what she said. Then what are we waiting for? One, two, three. Oh! At last. Ten p.m. Day shift over. How many is that today? Twenty-five dead. We'd have less accidents if we could reinforce the tunnels and replace some of the ropes on the pulleys. And do you realise how much that would cost me? These worthless fools ain't worth it. Ain't worth it? Just hire new people. It's cheaper. Whoa! Sorry, George. Well, you're in a rush. Gotta run if we're gonna eat. Then hurry up and get your pay, but mind you, he ain't in the best of moods. Two pennies. Thank you, sir. And you. But, sir, my brother's been here since early morn, same as I, even before the sun was up. He's younger and couldn't have done as much work as you. But, but, but... You want to keep working here? Next! It's all right, Andy. Let's go. Now, weren't you in a hurry to get someplace? Uh, thanks, George. Come on, Sarah. Poor Mrs. Higgins runs out food. Bye, George. Poor little tykes. On their own with no mum and dad. Wish I could do more for them. Line up for the next shift. Now! Worthless lot of beggars. I wish I could do more. John Wesley, to see my brother, Charles. Mr. Wesley, uh, of course, do come in. Your brother is upstairs. I understand he is still very ill. Well? We, he, had a most difficult time in America, which is why I sent him back to England sooner. I shall only be a moment. I know he needs his... Oh, dear me. He's sicker than I thought. Charles? Charles! I had no idea you were in such pain. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing My great Redeemer's praise my great Redeemer's praise The glories of my God and King The triumphs of His grace The triumphs of His grace John! Oh, John, it's so good to see you! For a moment, I, I thought you were dying. Dying? Dying, you say? <laughs> Why, my dear brother, I've never felt more alive. John, I have been saved. So, let me see if I understand correctly. You have been saved. Indeed, I have. Well, what do you mean, you have been saved? It means, dear brother, that I have finally found my saviour. Finally found your... Charles, we were taught about Christ and how to please him since we were tots. How can you say you have finally found him? You make it sound as if you never even knew him. I knew of him. I knew the scriptures. As I do. But I didn't know him. Do you recall the fire? How could I forget? It was the night God spared my life, and I have been trying to find a way to... Earn his favour ever since. Don't you see, John? God saved you from the fire when you could not save yourself. You fell into Father's arms, and now 
you need to fall into your Heavenly Father's arms. That's all you have to do. You remember Peter Bowler? Of course. On the ship to America? Yes. When the ship was going down. I feel we are going to perish! No! Don't say that! Ah! Oh God, please save us! Save us! Save me! Listen! What? What are you... Shh! Listen, John! Just listen! Do you hear that? Singing? But who could possibly be singing at a time like this? This way! The child's wait! I go in and out in peace. He will give me bliss, the treasure of his grace in gracious treasure. They Singing! How is it possible? Are they not afraid? Are they not afraid? Unafraid, all of you. Even the children seemed at peace. And you? Well, I... <laughs> scared out of my wits, I'm ashamed to say. I... I was afraid to die. But why? Why? Because... well, because I wasn't ready to meet God. I wasn't sure if I was worthy of... Tell me, John. Do you know that your sins are forgiven? My sins? Do you know that God will receive you into heaven? Do you know you are saved? I... Well, I hope I am. That's not what I asked. Do you know? Well, I... I do all I can to be. I mean, I try the very best I can to be. John. Those that need a savior are the ones that cannot save themselves. That philosophy of yours must be done away with. Philosophy? What do you mean, philosophy? My faith is based on God's word. Is it? Indeed it is. May I suggest a Bible study this evening? I am very familiar with the Holy Scriptures, thank you very much, sir. Then your knowledge at the meeting will be much appreciated. Aldersgate Street, 8 o'clock this evening, and don't be late! accuse me of not knowing God's word. God saved you from the fire when you could not save yourself. You fell into Father's arms, and now you need to fall into your heavenly Father's arms. This is ridiculous. Do you know you are saved? A little bit of night air is what I need. I'll just go out for a little walk. And that concludes our reading of Luther's introduction to the Book of Romans. What am I doing here? And we end with a verse from scripture which I believe captures the heart of our message today. This is the message that we declare to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Do you know you are saved? Yes. Yes. Yes!
Charles! What is it? I... I have fallen into my Heavenly Father's arms. I realise that I am a sinner saved by grace. John, this is wonderful! <laughs> <laughs> Praise God! Charles, we must share this joyful message with as many people as we can. That Christ saves us because we cannot save ourselves. Do you realise what this means? Everyone can be saved. Anyone can be saved. Perhaps this is the important task God has for me. This is the message he wants me to share. I felt my Lord's atoning blood Close to my soul applied Close to my soul applied For me he died For me, for me he died For me, for me, for me, for me, for me he died The book of Ephesians tells us, By grace ye are saved through faith. It is not of yourselves, but through the gift of God, not through works, so that no one can boast. I stand here a sinner. Sinner? I thought he was a clergyman. A sinner. Just like you. <laughs> Mr. Wesley! How dare you! Sinners in need of a saviour! What? Is he insinuating that I am not a Christian? Blind to our own needs, unaware of our own inadequacies, ignorant of the good news that, like the Apostle Paul wrote, Christ died for sinners, of whom I am chief. Salvation is a free gift for sinners like you and me. Mr. Wesley! Sinners indeed. Well, uh, that didn't go quite as expected, did it? But God never shuts one door without opening up another. Come along, Charles. We are all sinners! <laughs> Never mind that, Charles. Perhaps the next one. Wise of you to wait outside this time, brother. Oh, kicked out again? I'm running out of churches to preach in. You mean you're being run out of churches to preach in? This just came for you. Oh, what are we doing wrong, John? We're doing our best to get the good news to the churches. And perhaps God is doing his best to get us out. I beg your pardon? Maybe this is the answer. From George Whitfield, our old friend from the Oxford Holy Club, inviting us to... Preach in the open fields? But John, clergymen preach in church. George must be out of his mind. What respectable clergyman teaches in an open field? What did you say? I said, what respectable preacher teaches in an open field? Hmm. Yes. What respectable preacher would do that? It's just... well, it's ridiculous. It's simply not done. John? Where are you going now? To see George Whitfield. Whitfield? You asked a very good question, Charles. What respectable preacher teaches in an open field? No. 
You couldn't. Goodbye, Charles. John! sunk this low. Perhaps I was wrong in coming. What need could there be for me here? Are you a clergyman? I... I beg your pardon? A clergyman? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. And I'm here to... to preach. Preach? Here? The, the, that's right. Well, that's new. Go on, then. I stand here a sinner. I beg your pardon? <clears throat> a sinner. I stand here a sinner. A sinner just like you. Yes, sir. I am a sinner. <sighs> that I am. Go on, sir. I'm listening. I am a sinner. And I am come to tell you that Jesus Christ loves you. That he paid the price for your sins. And that he came to save you and me. Oh, tell me more, sir. Please! God is a comfort to the comfortless, a hope to the hopeless, a light to those that sit in darkness. Come, Christ begs us. Come to me, anyone who is weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. All right, bring him up. Right away, George. George. Sir? Don't bring him up. We don't have enough people again today. But they've been working all day. And now they'll have to work all night. I need them to do two shifts. We have fewer people working the shifts now that that John Wesley's out and about preaching in the fields. Worthless fools travel hours on foot to hear him. Some don't even want to work Sundays anymore. Problem is, I hear the troublemakers heading this way. And? I want you to fix the problem. You want me to do what? As much as Wesley's following has grown, he's also been pestered by mobs everywhere he goes. You were a prize fighter. Get some of your cronies together and mob the place. No one will be able to pin the blame on you. Besides, the pay will be good. You know you need the money. I... I don't need it that badly. Nothing would make me go that far. Nothing at all. No! The rope! Andy's fallen! Andy! 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 Ah! Oh, Andy! Andy! My leg! His leg is broken. It needs to be set. Too bad you don't have any extra money to pay for it. Then lend me some! It hurts. It really hurts. Oh, Andy! Oh, what am I going to do? Now, now, darling. Please! Please, I'll pay you back. I'll, I'll work night and day. I promise, please. I told you, I don't lend money. But your friend, George here, he can earn it for you. And he already knows how. Please, please help him. It's all right, Sarah. 
Where will this preacher be staying? I cannot thank you enough for coming here, Mr. Wesley. I have no doubt your words will be a blessing to the miners. The blessing is mine, Mr. Thompson. I have not met with such a welcome of late. You've been very hospitable. This is one of... <laughs> what was that? Sir, outside, there's a mob. A what? <laughs> Come, children. Good heavens. Everyone away from the window. Burst the door down. Anna, get the children to the back rooms. Mr. Wesley, follow me out the back door. Quickly. That mob is out for your blood. You've got to get away. This way. This... Mr. Wesley. Spread out. Find Wesley. Find Wesley! Tell me, good neighbours, who are you looking for? The preacher. John Wesley. Well, my good man, I am he. <laughs> oh! Got you right where I want you. Uh, tell me, uh, my good man, why are you going to hit me? First of all, I am not a good man. And second, I'm going to hit you because... Because I am here to tell you how much you mean to God, how much he loves you and your companions here. What? What are you going on about? We? I don't mean nothing to him. Well then, he wouldn't have sent his son to die for you, would he? I? Well, he didn't. The fact is, he did. Uh, what is your name? Uh... George. My name is George, but I'm here to... Christ died for you, George. That's how much you matter to him. I... How could you say that? I... I was here to... Look... I'm much too bad for God. Oh, but you see, George, that is precisely the good news. You cannot be good enough as I tried to be, or too bad as you feel you are. Christ died to save us just as we are, George. That's how much you, all of you, are worth to him. I'm sorry, Mr. Wesley, but you see, I came here to do a terrible thing. Because I need the money, and I need it bad. You see, I, I came to... Stop me from preaching today. You are not the first to try. No, I didn't come to stop you today. I came to stop you for good. You see, I came to kill you. George, will he be all right? He'll be very well taken care of, Sarah. Don't you worry. We have money! <laughs> I gather Wesley's been, uh, taken care of? Actually, Mr. Wesley has taken care of me. What do you mean? We do have help, Sarah. And he will be just fine. I trust you, George. We both do. What? What are you going to do now, eh? What? You've got no money, and you've got no job. You hear me? No job. You good for nothing, worthless fools. The whole lot of you. Actually, you're wrong. Turns out we're not so worthless after all. We're worth the Son of God dying for us. For you, too.
Don't worry. I got him just in time. You go along, George. I like what you've said. I may just follow after my shift. What are you waiting for? Get me up, you worthless fool! On second thought, why wait? Wait up, George! And God said, I have caused your sins to pass away from you. I will now change your dirty rags into clean garments. For you, all of us, are as a brand plucked out of the fire. As John Wesley continued field preaching, the crowds grew. Faced with the great task of caring for the spiritual needs of the new converts, John and Charles organized them into groups and taught them how to grow in the faith by means of prayer and Bible study. This method earned them the name Methodists. While John's organizational skills helped establish the movement, Charles used his musical talent to compose more than 6,000 hymns, many of which are still sung today. As the Methodists spread throughout England and eventually the world, they established soup kitchens and schools and orphanages. Children like Andy and Sarah received the religious, educational and medical care they lacked. John Wesley travelled nearly 250,000 miles on horseback and preached over 40,000 sermons. Both he and Charles served God faithfully until the time of their death. George Clifton remained a loyal follower of Christ and a faithful Methodist for the rest of his life. He never tired of telling the story of the night when he tried to take John Wesley's life, but instead, God took control of his. Do all the good you can, in all the ways you can, to all the souls you can, in every place you can, with all the zeal you can, as long as ever you can.